So welcome everybody. This is Energy um, Play Shop number 33. Today is February the 2nd, 2023. And I was just talking to everybody um, before I started the, the recording that today um, is the, the beginning of the seventh um, circuit. So we're purging the seventh circuit within the body. And what does that mean? What, what, what's the seventh circuit? Um, I, I don't know what's the seventh circuit, I, but I do know that um, according to Jason Estes, there are 32 circuits, uh, meaning energy pathways that are within our body. And then there are others that are around our body. And then there are circuits that govern how we experience time. And then there are circuits that, that um, govern how we experience space. So we first we clear the circuits that are within the body and then we clear the, the space and then the time. So that's in that whole process of clearing all the, the, the circuits um, within our body, it takes until, I, let me just tick it. So it's until November of this year. So we have about roughly a year to clear uh, that energetically we are supported to clear these circuits. And my understanding, so what are circuits? Um, the circuits, my understanding is that, or I think that the circuits really is how our um, matrix is. I'm not talking about the matrix of the, of the planet, they, those are different. So it's really the matrix of how, like per, these are, the circuits are personal matrix. So each one has an individual matrix that we, and the individual matrix is how we connect with the circuit or, or the, the matrix of um, Mother Earth, of the planet itself. So we have a network of energy pathways um, or otherwise known as um, circuits and that interface with the, the, the organic matrix of earth. And then um, there's, of course, there's more than one matrix on, on planet earth. Uh, there are um, a few matrix matrices and we actually, just um, moved away from the false matrix and we are going into or, or all the perch is actually to assist us to become more, um, to upgrade our ability to use the natural matrix of the, the earth rather than, because they're, because we've been attached to, or we've been using the false matrix for the past, I don't know how many thousands of years. And so the, as a human collective, we, we know the, the false matrix. We've been navigating the, more, the, the, the false matrix for all this time. And so now that we are, um, the, the false matrix is no longer actively supported energetically, However, because we still have our in individual matrix and within our individual matrix, we still hold a lot of the energy patterns that is keeping the um, false matrix in place. So that's why we, this process of clearing the circuits is really to assist us to purge out all the um, energy patterns within our own personal matrix that is still trying to map to the false matrix. So that's that's the process that we're working on now. Um, and so um, my understanding of the, our personal matrix is, um, oh, actually, <laughs> let me just, um, step back a little bit. So, so this is kind of the, the intro of what we are talking about to, tonight is how do we assist, how do we participate more fully in this process of 
clearing our personal matrix so that we can fully interface with the natural matrix of uh, Mother Earth that's already, that's either um, in five, in fifth dimension, um, or there is a 3D um, platform as well, a temporary 3D platform as well. But instead of the false matrix is the natural 3D matrix. So how do we clear our personal um, matrix so that we can work with the natural matrix? Why do we want to do that? Well, it's better. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you that the false matrix is is um, it, it's designed to um, disempower you and to siphon off your energy. That's all it's designed to do is to take, take, take away from you. So that's why we we don't want to keep um, uh, the, the the false matrix, all the, the the circuits that are right now that are still supporting the false matrix. We want to purge that out of ourselves. So um, <clears throat> that's the, the topic for this evening. But before I go into that, I actually um, would like to take everybody into a presence meditation first so that we can all disengage from whatever it was that, um, that, it's, that has been um, taking our attention early in the day and to come into presence so we can be able to absorb the material better and um, really engage with the natural matrix more easily. So let's do this by simply taking in a deep breath. So breathe in deeply. As much as you can, just breathe in. And when you can breathe in no more, then slowly release your breath. And then take in another deep breath. And let go. And as you let go, allow your body to relax as much as possible. And take in another deep breath again. And as you breathe in, set the intention that you want to call back all of your attention, intention, and energy to yourself. And as you breathe out, let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of calling back all of your attention, your energy to yourself. We start to focus on you. Let go of anything and everything that is outside of you. And look inwards. Instead of trying to experience the world outside, experience the world that is within you. And just pay attention to that. Let go of any distractions. And come home to yourself. And when you feel that you're more present, then shift your focus into your heart.
your heart is a central organ within your physical body that has access to both your physical body and all of your energetic bodies. So when you focus on your heart, you access to all parts of you in this moment. So within your heart, just stay present to what's going on inside your heart. And when you feel that you are more present now, and you feel more solid, you feel more like yourself, then you can come all the way back. Take another deep breath in and choose to be in this moment, in here and now. And open your eyes and come all the way back into the room. Okay, welcome, welcome back. I have a question, Winnie. Sure, go ahead. Um, are, are circuits that are interfacing with the earth, is that got anything to do with the grid lines? It interface with the grid line. Okay. So yes, it does, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. It's um, it's actually a good thing, um, because we. I remember I like long time ago. I I I had a reconnection, which is a procedure that's reconnect my energy grid with my my personal energy grid with the energy grid of the planet and um, pretty much my own spiritual journey was supercharged by that that um, process so that's um, and that's because when we are at that time the the false matrix was still um, very much alive and 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 um, support it energetically. So when I reconnected, even within the false matrix, when I reconnected with the energies of the earth, it actually boosted my own, um, the, the available energies that allowed me to, um, to kind of bust out of my own head space at the time and be able to set my sights on starting my spiritual journey. So that was, um, so now that we, we actually are able to um, start to purge all the remnants of the false matrix within our own personal uh, um, energy grid, we can like, and when we connect with the, the natural matrix of the earth, which is fully functional, it has always been fully functional. It's just that the false matrix kind of cuts us off from it. Now that the false matrix is gone, we like, it's the energy is so, that's why the energy is so profound now. <clears throat> because there have always been strong energies within the universe. It's just that we're, we're connected to a false matrix. So we, we, we have no access to the, the um, energies of the universe. 
Okay, so let me just uh, talk a little bit more about my understanding of how we create our internal matrix, because that, that will give us some idea of how to assist ourselves in purging this internal matrix, like all the, the old remnants of the, the internal matrix. So um, as far as I know, we have a thought. So we, we, have, a, we have a thought in our mind. Our mind perceives a, a thought. And depending on the thought, we may be inspired to take action. And when we take action, then we create a result or an experience for ourselves. And then we have the, um, all the story and all the, the meaning and value that we attach to that experience. So, um, and this thought, action, result, and how we create, how we attach meaning to the, the experience of the result is a chain of effects, a, a change of effects, which um, within our mind, it act, within our brain, within our actual brain, it actually creates a neural pathway. So if we take, if we, the first time we experience something, we created a neural pathway within our brain. Because everything we do, everything we experience, we actually store it. We, we remember, there's a memory of it. We may not always consciously remember it. However, somewhere within our energy field, it's stored there. So within the brain though, um, it's at first, the, um, the energy pathways first created within our brain through neural pathways. So every time you do something, you created a neural pathway. And if you, let's say, for example, we, um, we, we were young, we want to uh, make some money so that we can, um, let's say, buy a nice dress or something nice for ourselves. Then our parents would, would, would tell us, you know, go get a job. So, um, so we go get a job. Let's say we go to McDonald's, find a job, and, um, and then we, at the end of the um, like two weeks, we get paid, for example. And so we, we are able to fulfill, we, we, we'd be able to use the money to um, get whatever it is that we want. So everything that we do from having the, the desire to, to buy something and then taking action towards that, and then um, the experience of working at uh, McDonald's or whatever the, the experience is, and what story or meaning that we have um, attached to that, whether we like working at McDonald's or we hate it, so those all creates different, um, a neural pathway within our body. So if we keep doing similar things, so let's say we, um, we not just work there for two weeks, we work at the McDonald's for a year, let's say. So then that neural pathway has a whole year of always being able to um, fire in a, a certain way, meaning that similar thoughts and we take similar actions, we get similar results and we um, have similar, we'd attach similar meaning or story to that experience. If we do that day in, day out, it's going to create a, a neural pathway within our brain and that neural pathway would start to um, get to a point where we don't even, we're not even aware of that happening anymore because the, the, the body is made to be so efficient that once we have a thought, we, all, we already know, oh, we have to get a job. We, once we have the thought that, oh, I want to buy something, we already, um, the next thing already comes up, oh, we have to get a job. Oh, and then we have to, we, we will experience that 
and if our experience is we enjoy work, then we will feel we have make us make up a story that makes us feel um, exciting about the job. And if we hate the job, and we have we feel like we have to work really hard for so little money, then that neural pathway will become a something that is so automatic that all we have to do is think of something and we already like in the background we don't even notice it anymore because it's that um that neural pathway is is so um well traveled it's always going to end up like that so that's how we get into a groove and that's how we create the that's in a very in a very uh, simplistic way that's how we create um our circuits so if we have good experience then we create circuits that are um supportive of our experiences that has that is flowing if we have negative experiences and then we would create resistance and blockage so we would have why this because we want something but we know that if we want this if we want to let's say um buy we want to treat ourselves we know that we have to like if we don't like work then we say okay work is boring it's so hard work the, the resistance is already in the background. It's, um, it's kind of programmed us so that every time we think of trying to be good to ourselves or and treat ourselves, then we know that there's pain involved somewhere down the line. And so this becomes a, a belief. And um, now that we are, especially now that we are moving out of the false matrix, because the false matrix is created to support us to have an experience in the false matrix. I'm not saying that the, the false matrix is wrong, is bad, that we it, that it's, it's evil. The false matrix is something that as a human race, we agreed, like it has to be agree, in agreement in order for something that is as um, comprehensive as a false matrix to be able to be put in place on planet Earth. Because we are all, we, we came from eternal source. So free will, we have free will. And the false matrix was put in place because the free will of the, the human collective choose to have this experience of light, dark, of um, good, bad, light, dark, of being um, power over others, being a, a, a victim and being a victimizer. That's what we signed up for in the human collective up until um, you know, 10, 15 years ago or, or up until a certain time frame when the the false matrix was still fully supported energetically so that was the um agreement by agreement of the the, the human collective we agreed to experience this and now that's gone so within our um personal matrix though we still have all these energy pathways because of our experience because we've lived life under the the false matrix so we have all these energy pathways that's that has been reinforced and strengthened through so many years of living under the false matrix that these circuits are still um fired together very automatically we don't even know that it exists but we are still um some of us more more aware of it than others but i think i think very few of us are completely rid of these um, remnants of the force matrix we have all as a collective 
signed up to start to purge all of those out of our system. But we are still in the process of doing it. And so how do we actually start to do that? And um, let me see, have I left anything out? Okay, so I want to pause here for just a little bit to, to ask for any questions, feedback. No, everything is clear. <laughs> clear as mud now? Okay, great. I will continue on then. So now that, so how do we, what can we do to assist ourselves to, to help ourselves to get rid and perch our personal matrix, uh, the circuits within our body more um, efficiently? So, there's a very simple tool <clears throat> that we can use. Question? No? Okay. <laughs> so the simple tool is just to, to, to use a journal. So this is a, you can call it whatever journal you want, you know, um, daily activity journal or consciousness journal, just does not matter. The, 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 the tool is really to use this journaling format to assist yourself to see the patterns, to see your own patterns. So that is what the tool is for. So I have been using that myself. And uh, so each, so it's just a, like, just a book. And so what I've done um, is like, I think I started this December, what was that? The first day, oh, I call that my awareness journal. So the first day was December 13th. So, so I tried, I started that last year, um, December 13th. So day one, so what you do in your awareness journal is you write everything that you do. So I wake up in the morning. So for the day one, I wake up at 9.45 a.m. <laughs> oh my God, I've been sleeping in. <laughs> and then what I did afterwards was I went, I, I went to the bathroom, I peed, and then I um, went back to bed to meditate in bed. And I meditate until 10.15, and then I got up and I start to make my bed and I start to um, change into my day clothes. So that's what I put in my awareness journal. So everything that you do, um, obviously you don't put things down like I took a breath or I, I so that's maybe a little too too detailed but things that you actually um, move your body around to do then uh, put those things down you can um, make it as detailed as you want to like minute by minute, or if you want to, if you think that that's too much because you have to work and you don't want to do that, maybe just break it down by each half hour or each hour. So kind of have a summary of what you did within the hour. You just write those, everything that you do, write it down. And also things that are noteworthy. For example, I was working and then somebody called me and they said something to me and I was just completely triggered then that would be something that is worth putting in your journal so write down all your activities and also write down the times that you've uh, triggered so or if something unexpected happened then you definitely write those down so that that kind of a daily journal and um so what I've done is like, okay, so last entry was I, it, I'm like 11.40 p.m. I went to bed. So I didn't really write anything else down for that day after I, I, I went to bed. And then the next morning, the same thing. Start over again. And um, so that's the daily journal. So do that for, I, I, I did that for about, for a little longer than a month. I think. So I actually suggest that you do 
at least a month. And if you feel inspired or if that's something that resonates with you, feel free to do it even longer. However, at least a month, because it, what this journal does is it actually starts to train yourself to observe you, um, your activities, to observe yourself. So that really is what this is for. And, and also um, how you can make use of this journal is that after a couple of days or, or a week, depending on how, how much uh, or how many activities you have during the day, if you have a lot, you may want to do a, a review of your activities after three or four days. If you don't do too much, then maybe after a week you want to review. So what are you looking for when you review it? You're looking for patterns of activities. For example, I um, eat certain things for breakfast. Then, um, and, and there's a pattern there. Then, and then another pattern is I, let's say go to work during a, a certain hour. So then there are those, that's what I mean by pattern. Things that you, that is a common um, thing that you do from day to day, then that's a pattern. So they usually would be at least a few patterns, things that you do over and over again during the, the, the course of a week or even a couple of days. There will be things, there will be activities that you do repeatedly. And you ask yourself as you review is, why do you do those things? Um, okay. I actually want to share screen because I have a whole slew of um, questions that you can ask yourself when you do the review. Uh, okay. So this is where we're at. Okay, simple tool is to um, a journey, a journal, keep a journal, write everything. And at the end of the week, um, set aside some time to review it. So first question you ask yourself is, were you actually able to keep the, the, the journal for a whole week? Because some people may not even be able to keep it for a whole week or even for a couple of days, they may do it the first day, but the second day things would come up and they can't continue anymore. So that actually is a, a sign that there is resistance to doing this. Because when you keep a journal of your activities and of, of the things that you um, feel triggered, things, times that you feel triggered, you, um, you bring all these things to your awareness, to your consciousness. Some people don't like it because it's very confronting. It may be, I'm, I'm not saying that you have, that um, this is going to happen. I'm just saying that it's possible. So first question is, were you actually able to keep the journal for a whole week? And then, um, and if you can't, then yeah, like, don't make it a big deal. Don't try to shame yourself, okay? <laughs> is then just start over. So next day, just say, okay, this is day one again. So I'm going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to start this journal and I would do this again. And you aim for a whole week again. And maybe the second time you get to day five and you get sidetracked and you can't do it, then you start the next day again you start from day one and you do it until you can actually do it for a whole week okay and once you are able to you you got over the resistance of um being aware of your own um activities and then you start to look at the patterns of the activities and ask yourself why you chose to keep each of the pattern. You ask, why do you choose to keep that pattern? So 
And you ask yourself the next question is, how do you feel about the reasons why you chose to keep the pattern? How do you feel about them? And then the next question you ask is, who has the power in this choice? So are you in power? Do you feel more powerful that you, you make this choice? Or do you feel that, oh, I, I don't have a choice. I have to do this. So, so ask yourself those questions. And so this, all these questioning and review is really to let you know where you're at in the process of um, purging the force matrix from your own personal individual matrix. Note for the activities that you feel you have to or need to do because of whatever reasons. Because have to and need to is, um, it does not empower you. Because you, nobody feels powerful when they have to do something or when they need to do something. Nobody will feel powerful. So have to and need to are uh, telltale signs that this is false matrix stuff. Doing something out of fear or out of shame or out of any other negative emotions, then you know that these are false matrix things. If you feel no energy, if you sleep a lot, you feel no energy, then there's a possibility that it's a false matrix because you are, because um, when you're in the organic matrix and you really have clear your resistance, you cleaned out all of that, you actually feel more energy and more motivation. So, so after you've done that review, um, just give yourself a like a, um, in general would you would you say that the majority of your activities are supporting you to stay in the false matrix or not and also ask yourself the question is who are you being when you choose to continue these patterns so these are some of the questions that you ask yourself and depending on what your answer may be to those, you would know where you are in that process of clearing the false matrix out of your own personal matrix, because your own personal matrix is really what supports you to um, get to know the real you, the true person of who you are as a soul that is living in um, this earth as having a experiences playing co-creating on earth that's what your personal matrix supports you to do and if a, a lot of your activities um, are supported by negative emotions or you feel you have to you feel powerless to make choices that you actually prefer that you have to do something because you know, I have to live, I have to, I have to um, work. Um, the idea that you have to work in order to sustain yourself, that's a false matrix. I know a lot of people may disagree with us, but, but we have human beings, we have to work to make money. Um, no, not really. <laughs> that's something that has been, that's something that has been like really um, bashed into us and, and like, like really been um, completely <clears throat> pushed down into us through generations of programming, generations of conditioning that we actually believe that we have to work, especially work on, um, um, like work on something that we don't enjoy doing that we don't feel inspired, that we have to actually work hard, we have to suffer bad jobs or um, suffer through jobs that are so not a representative of who we are or what we like to do. That's all matrix stuff. 
know the 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 real you can create something that is totally supportive of who you are that you actually enjoy doing and choose to do rather than have to do so <laughs> questions comments I just look at like the people who's retire is it will work with them so faster because they have the flexibility of uh, of the time and uh, and it's a sport there like they don't have to do like when I get up yes I do a little bit for myself like one hour in the morning that's my time after that I, I, I work at least eight hours a day so and in that work I'm out, like you know one of those things is go 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 and after that, when I shut my computer off or do whatever I have to do, after that, again, I'm a different person. If I look at my job, if I say I have to know, I love my job. I, I, I do it because uh, I like it. Maybe I'm used to it for a long, long time. So it is a, a, a repetition of getting up and going through all the whole thing again and again. So maybe I should change the job then. Um, <clears throat> it's for me. It's not for me to tell you what. Right, right, right. But I will. I will right go through the the you. practice. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's totally not for me, and I'm not trying to um, get anybody to you know change their life. Right. It's, you are the. Because you are your own creator. You are the one that is responsible for creating your own life. Mm -hmm. And emphasis on responsible is that you, um, it's, okay, what, what, what was I trying to say? You're responsible for creating the life that you love. And nobody can tell you what the life that you love looks like. You are the only one who can do that. So that's why it's the individual matrix. It's not a collective matrix. It's an individual matrix. You are the one that's responsible for working with that individual matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this, this practice will of course unfold so many things mm -hmm. thank you thank you okay you're welcome was, yes go ahead I was, I was just thinking about um is it possible that like our our if we keep track of our emotions as well they're going to be also a um, sort of a um something that's going to going to show us what's going on as well absolutely Our, it's, it's going to run activity. Your, yeah. your journal so put in it whatever you want to become aware of so right. i just suggest all the activities or the things that you do feel free to put in all the feelings that you feel because that will definitely um like when you look, when you do the review um, at, at the end of the week, it will come up. Like you would, you would feel it. You, you didn't write it down, but, but it will come up. Um, right. However, yeah. if you specifically want to track that, then please feel free to put it in as well. Did it surprise you what you found in your journal after the month? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. <laughs> yes, I uh, I found out that I'm a control freak. <laughs> and I need to I really uh, start to do more restructuring and try new things. I like it's it's like okay, my um I really need to expand my horizon a lot more. So <laughs> but that's what the awareness journal is for is because we live our day 
um, day in, day out for so many months, so many years, we don't even notice our own, um, like, we don't even notice our own limits. We could, mm -hmm. because we have, we, are, we just become oblivious to them. It's been going on for such a long time. But when we actually write it out and it's in front of us, and we cannot, and staring at us, we can't really um, hide anymore. It's so that's so that's why um, writing it down that absolutely helps. Yep. Okay. Thanks. That's a great idea. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> for me, for me, the resistance is to write it down, like you said. You know, I will do it for two, three days or things, and then I'll just, you know, because uh, I live in a different way every day. There's no fixed time for me. There are a few things that I do, like fixed, like <clears throat> I have to, when I make up my mind to get out of the bed, then I have to do my exercise routine or, and then, uh, depending on the urgency to go to the washroom, I can get distracted into doing something else, which I have been putting off or it just suddenly occurs to me that I need to do. So my day always is different like every day for me. But to write things down, I, I have a very bad resistance to that. Okay, resistance. <laughs> yeah, resistance. Yeah, I I have tried it like so many times, like you know, journaling. Mm -hmm. Like the only time I was successful is uh, when I go to the clinic, uh, and every year they would uh, do their new intern, so they would ask for a food report of what what I eat and have, and what time and what exactly do I eat. So that that used to be a big chore for me, but because I had to report it, I was accountable to somebody. I I did it for a week, but then I go overboard. I want to put every detail in it, and it becomes a task. So I'm just glad that for that week that is done, or two weeks actually, because uh, <clears throat> I go every two weeks here yeah, to the clinic. That is the only time I've actually kept a sort of a journal. But there are so many other programs I've been through, and it's just I do not understand. Unless I'm accountable to somebody, I won't do it. I know that. So that means it's still the old matrix, like. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So the I you know the I I'm just um like, you can do it when you have to do it for someone else yeah you won't do it for yourself what does that tell you about your value about yourself mm -hmm. so when you can do it for someone else then you know that you actually can do it you just don't feel that you know you're important enough to do it for yourself i think we take it for granted we say oh it's for me and i know it so I think that's what we, we, we try to do it. But uh, you know, like lately, almost two weeks, I am watching what I'm doing, my, my happiness and when I'm sad. And I do tick mark, but now I start writing. And I don't like to write, but I'm really happy. I had, I had the book, so I wrote quite a bit. <laughs> So I was one of those people. I no, no, I don't want to write anything. So the the false matrix um, is really we all within our individual um, matrix, our, our personal matrix, all of the energy pathways is set to support the false matrix. So when you start to do something that has the potential of taking you outside of the false matrix, you're gonna have reasons, you're gonna have 
um, resistance. That is normal. So you have to really, like, if you choose to do this, I'm not saying that you have to get out of the false matrix. By all means, if you really enjoy life, you don't want to change, then stay. There, I'm not saying the false matrix is good or bad. I'm just saying that if you want to make a change, then you need to clear your own personal matrix so that you can be able to interface with the natural ma matrix of Earth and be able to step into a new way of creating reality for yourself. So that's what is, is the process. You don't have to do it. It's okay for you to, um, if you don't feel that there is a big need to change, don't do it because you feel, you know, you have to do it. Don't, don't do it. Definitely don't do it because I asked you to do it. If you choose to do it, then yes, know that you will have resistance because all of your energy matrix within your personal matrix has been, um, it's so custom. It's so, um, you know, it's, it's all to allow you to function in the force matrix. If you want to make a change, yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. And if you are not willing to get beyond the discomfort, then you've made your choice. And it's not bad. It's not good. It's just your choice. So that's if, if you make that change and you, you you continue to overcome the resistance until you're doing something different that maybe is more what you prefer, is your energy going to automatically go up? Yes, pretty much guaranteed because right. okay. your true self, your true self is um powerful creator you're an aspect of the um source creator so so you know when you start to clear yourself out of the the false matrix you will be able to get access to um like proper access to the energy matrix that is natural so that is absolutely going to support you. You have more energy because you're not fighting against yourself. When you're in the force matrix, your true self is still there. And all of the energies that on earth right now is supporting the organic matrix. You're trying to stick to the false matrix. There is going to be a resistance because your true self will try to go one way and the false matrix will try to make you to go the other way. So you are fighting against yourself. So this resistance, even though you may not be consciously aware of it, it is going to siphon off your energy, which is exactly what the false matrix is designed to do. And it's brilliant design. It is really brilliant design. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you. When it, <clears throat> sorry, I started coughing. Uh, what Nishi said in the beginning when she just spoke uh, now, it is not that uh, I don't want to change. The, the resistance is only because if I start writing, I will write too much and I will get distracted. Like, it will take me longer. Uh, so I, I, I would, but I don't believe that I'm living in the old system that much. I have changed a lot, but I change, change it to suit myself. Like I do whatever I feel like. I'm not doing it for another person or another thing. I just choose my own path. So I don't believe I'm in the false matrix that much. Um, I, 
some of the other questions you may ask is, um, I guess emotionally, sometimes there is a pattern, yeah, emotional pattern. Um, okay, <clears throat> it's it's not for me to, to say anything. You you are the only one who can who is in charge of your experience. So if you really enjoy what you're experiencing then that's great. Yeah, but do you think that is also still depleting the energy? Or? Do you have energy? Well, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Like, like today, just because I had to get up earlier, I, I tried to rest and my mind would not stop. So, uh, but I'm I get bored very easily. I, so when I get bored, I want to just drowse away. Okay. Do you feel motivated? To yeah, Do when you feel I motivated to live the life that you have. Do you love your life? I think those are some of the questions that uh, may give you an answer. Okay. Because uh, when you are existing in the, the organic matrix, your true self would be able to experience joy, light, love. And that is your true self. Uh, Yeah, though I still have ups and downs here. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Emotionally, I'm not maybe there. Yeah. I, I realize that now. So it's not so much the physical as the emotional part. So how do you do that? How do you change that? Do you have some ideas on that? Um, so first, first thing is to really see the pattern. See what patterns you're running first. Mm. So that's that's where the the journal is going to come in handy. Okay. All right. You can carry on. Okay. The 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 journal the journal is to allow you to see your own patterns. If you don't know what patterns you're running, then you don't know, you, there's nothing you can do. So when you can see your own patterns, then you can make a choice. Do you want to change it or not? And if you want to make the choice that you want to change it, then you can take action. So that is how you move from the force matrix into the organic matrix, is you first have to see what what patterns you have in your own personal matrix. And you choose to do something else. So, okay, so continue on. Any other questions before I continue on? Because I've talked about how to see your own pattern. I still have not talked about how to change your own pattern, which is what some of you have asked, so. No more, no, no other questions for now? Okay, so let's move on to take a look at the, um, how to shift your own pattern. So, um, <clears throat> the next thing is really, you know, how to change your pattern. So what I suggest, there are many ways to change your pattern. And depending on um, who you talk to, they will have, probably have different suggestions of how to change your own patterns. Um, for example, I have, um, so according to Chris Duncan, so Chris Duncan actually have a, something called um, like superconscious 
mind process, so magnetic mind process that he has created that is able to shift us um, so that we can let go of all the, the what's blocking us to create the life that we love and start to take action to start to manifest the, the life that we actually, or the experience that we actually want to have. So he has one way. If you talk to Emilia Benz, or if you look at Emilia Benz, she would have a different way, um, a little bit different way of how to make changes. It's really to um, process the negative emotions by allowing it to exist in your own energy field and once you process that then you set a goal and you start to go towards it so um, the point is that different people have different ways there is not one perfect way to do it so what I'm presenting here is my way <laughs> it's what works for me so please feel free to um, take whatever it is that resonate with you or at whatever it is that you want, okay? So let me just go through what I suggest and so you know my reasoning behind it. And then um, you can go and create um, and cater this to whatever suits you and uh, resonates with you most. So what I suggest is really to connect with your creator identity first, meaning to, to go into a, um, to come back to center, to ground yourself and to connect with the, the creator being that is within yourself. So you probably need to go into a bit of a meditation, a meditative state to go into a, um, a state where you actually become present to who you are as a creator being then when you are in this identity, in your creator identity, then you choose what do you want to do? What do you want to have? Or what do you want to experience? So choose, make a goal, choose something that you want to work towards. And once you choose something, then um, the, the thought patterns within you that is, not aligned with that, your choice is going to come up. For example, I want to write a book, for example, I want to write a book on healing. So once I make that choice, okay, I want to choose to create that book, to write that book. So all the things, all the, the, the fears, I'm not good enough. Who am I to think that I can write this book? What do I know to write this book? And I don't, I can't even, um, you know, I can't even sit down for 30 minutes, let alone write a book. So all of these thought patterns that's not aligned, not resonate with you writing that book and having your experience, the experience of creating that book and put it out in the universe is going to come up. So you will notice all these things coming up. So once you notice all the, the, um, the dissonance and all the resistance coming up, then you need to connect with the highest frequency version of you outside of space-time. Why do you wanna do this? Because you wanna bring in enough energy, the high, the high, a higher frequency and lots of energy to assist you in just um, letting go of all these objections and dissonance within your own energy field. So that's what the connecting to the highest frequency version of you outside of space-time is. Or um, what Sifu James does is simply breathing in and connecting with the pure, pure love of the creator source. So sometimes I connect with the, the highest frequency of me outside of space-time, Sometimes I would just, you know, go straight to the source, just connect with the pure, pure love of the creator source. So since we, each one of us are in an aspect of the creator source, so I'm just going to the source. So either way, according to me, uh, will do. So, so that would 
connect you with a much higher frequency and bigger source of energy that is going to assist you in releasing all of the thought patterns that um, you kind of um, become more conscious of once you set a goal, or once you, you have an idea what you want to achieve. So, and also let go of, because these are like all these fears and not good enough, all these thought patterns are the, the thought patterns that you are aware of. So I like to throw in things that I am not aware of because there may be hidden things within my obstacle, like obstacles within my lineage or even past life experience that has it that, oh, once I wrote the book, I actually would die. So something like that. That would be a, like, so if my, um, if my unconscious mind wants to keep me alive. So if I have that experience in my past life, that I would die after I, I wrote a book, then like unconscious, these unconscious um, fear would come up, which I'm not aware of because it's unconscious. So I actually want to ask the, the, the highest frequency version of myself to release the patterns that I know of and also throw in all the the, the unconscious patterns um, of my past life and also my lineage, meaning something that I inherited from my mother's side or my father's side. Okay, so release all of these resistance, um, you know, negative beliefs, negative feelings, release all of this. So the, the big, the big um, you know, blast of energy coming in would assist you in doing that. And once you have cre created a um, kind of a, a clearing, um, um, open field for yourself to walk towards the goal that you have chosen for yourself, then take action towards that experience. So that is my, so that's what I propose that works. Questions? Comments. I can simply say thank you for uh, giving me the knowledge uh, of this. And um, it, it makes a lot of sense because you know that I'm doing that almost like two weeks now. Yes, it does work. Even I go to like when I get up in the morning, Instead of using the same toothpaste, I changed to a different toothpaste. Look, I said, okay, let me change. Instead of just going to that, and I, I do, I get up and I said, okay, let's see this one. No, I'm gonna change this. And instead of having my uh, coffee in the morning or tea in the morning, I said, no, let's drink a glass of water. So just a little little things. They are, uh, they are making me aware. And I'm aware, like, I do think before I do anything. It's not like before, just get up, like, just your body is doing a mechanism, get up and do, make your tea and drink and do a little meditation and get back to work. Now I think before I do anything. I, I give a pause. Mm -hmm. you know, let's see. Yeah. You like it. That's, so you, you but it made me. Goodness. Yes, yeah. it made me a little more aware what I'm doing. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm just thinking, um, like, how, how will you know it's cleared? Because some of these patterns are like years and years and years deep. You don't. Okay. So all you can do is, um, uh, um, is like before you do the clearing is maybe ask yourself, so on a scale of one to 10, how much do I feel stuck? And then you do the clearing once and you recheck again. So what's, what's the, so you, you kind of calibrate. So let's say if at the first, before you do any clearing, it's at a 10. After the clearing, the first clearing, you may go down to, let's say, a five. That's pretty good already. But, right. you still, but you still want to do more. 
then um, so then you just check in. Do I want to like because your body is um, has an intelligence. Every time you clear something, it takes energy to integrate. So you have to check in with your body. Do I want to clear the rest so that I can go down to zero? Or do you think that you need to wait for an, a, like give yourself a few hours at least or a couple of days to integrate and then go back to it again? Okay. So you clear it until you get to the point where it does not stop you to move forward anymore. It may not be possible to clear 100%, but it's definitely very possible to clear at least 50 or even 30, um, 70% of it off. So when you clear, like even if you clear 50%, you're already much more open to take some action because we are human being. We, um, we, one of the condition is that we um, create a belief or story around what it is that we experience. So when you take some action and you have a positive experience, it reinforces you that you can actually create something more for yourself. So the more you do it, the more you convince yourself that you are powerful, you're capable. So you would take even um, more bold moves towards your goal. So at first, maybe you can only take a small step. The more you do this, repeat this, it's like you are um, creating that internal matrix that supports you to feel powerful. It takes one day at a time right <clears throat> right yeah okay okay yeah thank you okay thank you for asking any other questions comments i'm not clear on the clearing part how do you do the clearing um the clearing is to bring in the energy to clear because um, all the like a thought a thought or belief it's all actually just energy everything is energy so it's just that these energies um, some of the beliefs that you have may be something that has a lot of history so it's it's a lot of energy holding that belief in place. So that's why every time you try to do something outside of that belief, you're being blocked or the results you get is not what you wanted to experience. However, no matter how many years, it's still just energy. So you're bringing in your highest vibration self, um, the highest version of you, outside of space-time that is pretty much a God-like, an aspect of God or the creator being. So that's a lot of energy and you have access to that. So you're just bringing in energy to clear those um, accumulated blocks of energy. So it's just using energy to clear it. And when you clear those energy, what you have access to is you're able, to, um, the feeling that I get is that I actually, I remember um, uh, for the longest time, I um, think that, you know, I, I don't like to do certain things because, you know, I thought it's um, uh, like a, a, a spiritual person is shouldn't do those things. So that that was my you know that was my block you know. So a uh, the actually it is a spiritual person shouldn't be able to um do to 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 run a um a spirituality business like a 
a regular business because the regular business is all about greed and taking and just um, like taking as much money as possible and, and giving as little of your time as possible. So that's the model of um, being in a, a coach and all that. So I have it that, you know, I, I can't do that. And it's not good to do that. And I don't want to learn how to be a good business person because business is greed, evil. So that was one of my block. And so when I start to, um, cause it is a false matrix because business actually, there's nothing bad about business. There are actually very spiritual and very ethical um, business people. It's just that when I think of a successful business person, I always um, think of, you know, greed. So that, that was my own block. So I don't want to be successful I, because I don't want to um, sink that low. So that was my own block. And for the longest time, I didn't want to be successful at all. And that actually took a lot of letting go, a lot of energy work until all of a sudden one day, I just think, oh, why not? If I am successful, I can actually help more people. I can actually have more money so that I can use those money um, to benefit more people. So, th so that's when I start to turn around how I feel and think about success and how, how I want to do business. So that is what clearing can do. You may not feel your thought pattern shift um, all of a sudden. But once you have cleared that blockage, new ways of thinking, new perspective will start to be able to come in. You can't go, I can't subscribe to the, 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 the fact that there are actually spiritual businesses for the longest time because now, that's a big block there. So that, that's what clearing energetically can do, is you have access to higher frequency thought. And those higher frequency thoughts would in turn inspire you to take different actions. Did I answer your question? Mm, yes, thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for you. Thank you for your question. It takes me time to unlock. Mm -hmm. You you would feel it after after you uh, um, take the steps to clear the, the the energy blocks that you have access to higher frequency ways of thinking. Yeah. Those the lower frequency thoughts will still be there, but you won't be attracted to them anymore. Oh. It doesn't mean that you know you can't even conceive of the low frequency. It's still there. You just okay. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Um, at you, but because your own energy has shifted, your own frequency has shifted, mm -hmm. so you're not attracted to them anymore. So they're still there. But, you know, you don't want to go there anymore. You don't want to entertain them. You don't want to invite them in and have supper. You just, you know, take a look at them and hi, bye, and you go on to higher frequency. Thoughts? Oh. Very good. Okay. You're always teaching us something that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Uh, that's, that's my aim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Any other questions, comments? It's very quiet. <laughs> no more. Are you guys ready for your meditation? Yes. Okay.